Just about every passenger car or truck in existence uses some type of suspension to suspend and control the vehicle's movement. Most of the time, this suspension will involve a shock or strut. In this video, we're going to familiarize ourselves with their functions and crucial components, learn when they need to be serviced, and talk just a bit about working on them. Last week, you guys were introduced to Ben's F-150 that he purchased, and this is my truck, a little 1997 Nissan Hardbody. For this video, I'll be using this guy as a visual aid because the design is extremely simple. So what we're looking at here is a shock, and we know that it's a shock because this is not structurally supporting the truck in any way. That is the job of this leaf spring back here. So if we were to remove this shock entirely, for example, it wouldn't have any effect on ride height or structural stability of the truck. It would only affect the way that the truck suspension is going to dampen and control rebound. So shocks and struts function off of the premise of turning kinetic energy into thermal energy. In this case, we are looking at a shock, which is off of this truck, but the premise is the same for a strut. Uh, essentially, you have a tube, which is filled with a bunch of fluid, and that is going to be pushed through a series of small holes called orifices inside by a piston. And the orifices only allow so much fluid to travel through them at a given rate, which is how you get your dampening. And that is going to control the movement, the body movement of the truck and the suspension uh, just by the size and number of those small holes and how they allow fluid to travel through them. While they both serve the same purpose in dissipating kinetic energy, the difference between a shock and a strut is that a strut is a structural part of the vehicle that it is installed on. So while I could totally drive this truck without the rear shocks installed, it would just be a very extremely bumpy ride uh, and uh, not perform the way that it is intended to. If I don't have this strut installed on the vehicle that it comes on, then that vehicle is not going anywhere. The suspension is basically going to be sitting on the wheel. Perhaps the most well-known and obvious function of shocks and struts is to make sure that occupants of a vehicle aren't rattling their teeth out over bumps in the road. But the way that shocks and struts affect the handling of a vehicle is perhaps even more important than ride quality. Shock absorbers need to not only absorb kinetic energy, but also transfer it to the tires of the car in order to create safe and predictable handling. Check out this extremely crude demonstration I've devised with a bunch of water bottles. Imagine that my hand is the car, the bottle is the shock or strut, and the table is the tire or road. The first shock absorbs all of the kinetic energy the car is generating, but fails to transfer that force to the tire and road, much like a worn out shock that no longer controls its flow of fluid to absorb and dampen. As a result, the tire might have insufficient contact with the road when turning or braking, resulting in unpredictable and dangerous handling. This second shock transfers all of the kinetic energy of the car to the tire and road, but does a poor job of absorbing any of it. Extremely stiff suspension like this will usually be caused by a very stiff spring rate, but shocks with aggressive compression and rebound strokes can contribute to this problem. When used properly, extremely stiff suspension will usually be found on cars with a great deal of aerodynamic downforce to prevent the suspension from bottoming out, but can sometimes also be found on very aggressive setups for street cars, though this is not usually recommended. But this last shock is able to both absorb and transfer kinetic energy. The hole that I've stamped through the top is an extremely crude version of the orifices you would find in a shock or strut. And obviously, you should use a thicker fluid in your suspension than water. That is a very, very rudimentary explanation of the concepts at work here. Shocks and struts help with the weight transfer involved in braking, accelerating, and cornering. Aftermarket struts and shocks, like these coilovers on my Evo, are often designed with different goals in mind than just comfort and functionality. These strut-style coilovers on the Evo feature a great deal of adjustability in their absorption rates, which can yield a stiffer or softer ride quality. They also allow your vehicle to sit lower without damaging the strut itself. Air suspension works similar to this, with a literal bag of air rather than a spring sitting on a strut. Often this will allow you to modify the ride height of your vehicle on the fly, rather than by adjusting the seating position of a spring like you would on a coilover. What I said about performance shocks and struts being built for lower ride heights is pretty important too. This Bilstein strut was an OEM part on my Evo, but maybe 15,000 miles after I changed the OEM spring to an aftermarket lowering spring, the strut failed. You can see the fluid leaking from the inside of the strut down the strut body. 
Lowering the car puts the strut outside of its designed operating compression height. A bit of a drop will likely not cause an issue, but in an aggressive drop like this, these were probably two inches, or springs which are not stiff enough, can definitely accelerate wear on the stock strut or shock. So how do you know when it's time for you to replace your shocks or struts? Well, usually after about 50,000 miles of use, it's a good time to start checking your suspension components for wear, especially if you've been doing a lot of towing or hauling. Excessive rebound or what feels like a very bouncy ride might be a sign that your struts or shocks are no longer functioning properly. A good test to run is to count the number of times your vehicle bounces when you put it under some load. Ideally, it should only bounce once or twice before the rest of the shock is absorbed by the shock absorbers. One, one bounce. One or two bounces. On the other hand, a vehicle with malfunctioning or blown shocks or struts is going to do a very poor job of controlling rebound and it's going to have a very bouncy ride. So to simulate that, since uh, the shocks on this truck were good, I've just taken them out and we can see how much more bounce and how much longer the truck is going to bounce than when it has shocks installed. It just keeps going. It's like a, it's like a, a sailboat. Uh, so this is uh, this is very similar to the kind of sensation that you get with very blown shocks in the back. And finally, visually inspecting your struts or shocks for wear or failure is very important. Seeing fluid on this strut body is what let me know that this strut had finally had enough. When it comes to maintaining your suspension, it's typically a fairly straightforward process. Remember to always use safety goggles and always replace struts and shocks in pairs to ensure ride quality and control. If you're attempting to install a bare strut, Advance Auto does have spring compressors on hand as the loaner tool. However, a much simpler option is simply purchasing a complete strut assembly. Advance carries a variety of complete strut assemblies, such as the Quick Strut line from Monroe, which comes with everything you need to simply install a brand new strut assembly in one go. Remember that anytime you're servicing your vehicle's suspension, your alignment might be subject to change. With something as simple as installing a shock, that shouldn't be the case. However, if you're doing any kind of work on your struts or you're raising or lowering the ride height of the vehicle, you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you get your alignment checked after you've finished working on the car. This video was a bit more on the educational and informational side than what we usually get up to, but it was great working with Advance on it and it was honestly a very educational process for me. We've got more aftermarket suspension content coming to the channel soon, along with an entirely new project car to showcase it on. Until then, thanks for watching guys and have a great day.